a conference and he decided to do certain lockdown and certain things. So we have no choice than to present two messages this afternoon because God's message must go out. So we will be presenting the second and the third angel message this afternoon. So I pray, Lord, I pray that you will keep the, um, the presenter in prayer, that her voice will, will be clean and clear, that she will not get hoarse. So before we start, we will start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, indeed, we want to give you thanks and praise for your many blessings, Lord. We thank you for your love towards us, Lord, Father, as you said, while we were yet sinners, you came and died. I pray that you will hold back the weather. I pray that men and women will get to know you for who is life eternal. I thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit. He is moving in this place, Lord. And that men and women are getting to know you. And they, are, they have to make a decision. I pray that you will accompany them. And that the decision that they will make will be one that will fit them for heaven. Continue to be with us. Continue to guide us. I pray a special upon the, your woman servant. I pray that you will put your words in her mouth. That she will not speak her words, but she will speak your words. And when all said and done, Lord Father, that we all will have a place in your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So we will only have, we will not have the health feature today. Because of time and because of the weather and the two, the two presentations that we have to do. So all we will do is just, uh, we will start with us, we will just have a special item of music by Brother Bing. If I can get too close. Ready? Somebody have to cover him. Good afternoon, everyone. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonesome and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is he. And I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy.
Amen. His eyes is on the sparrow. And he is watching on me and you. So, we also want to remind you all that we have the little book, the little booklet, dealing with on the Sabbath that has been present yesterday afternoon. Anyone that is interested, we have a few copies remain. remain. We also have a few copies on the state of the dead. So anyone interested, they can come across. And we also have Bibles. Anyone that's interested also in a Bible, that they can come and have one. I want you to remember that, that we are presenting over and over that read your Bible and pray every day and you will grow. Neglect your Bible and forget to pray and you will shrink. That does not mean physically but spiritually. Only by the reading of the word of God that we can have a close relationship with our Heavenly Father, our Creator and our Redeemer and our soon coming King. Amen? So we will, we will go straight into the message. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. A blessed day again to the people of, of testing of KP Lands. A blessed day to you all. As my husband rightly said, that he ain't Trinidad. The only thing that is is stuck is cricket when we are experiencing rain. Now the word of the Lord must be preached. So we are here. We are here to do that today. Now, right before we, we get into the word of the Lord, join me as we pray. Join me as we pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, O Lord, for your love, your mercy, and your grace towards us, your people. We thank you, O Lord, for the opportunity of being here in Cape Land, where we can experience, O Lord, and hear from you. We thank you, O Lord, for the opportunity of being in the land of the living. Though at this point our country is about to shut down, we know that you, the Lord, thy God, is moving. Yes, Lord. So, Father, continue to move upon our hearts, continue to move upon our mind, and help us, O oh Lord, to surrender unto you, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Continue to guide, Lord Jesus, us. I pray that your word will continue to go forth and touch the hearts of the hearers, that a change will be made in, in our lives, and that we will con come to you and surrender all unto you, Father. So again, be with your word. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Now, yesterday, we looked at the first angel's message. And we saw within that message that God is really calling us back to himself. He is calling us back to himself being the creator God. Not only that, but we saw that whatsoever we do will be raised up against us in judgment. And then we looked at worship. We saw that God is calling us to observe his law, his ten commandments, which includes the fourth commandment, which is the Sabbath. Now we are looking at the second angel's message at this time. We are looking at Revelation chapter 14 verse 8. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 8. And it says, And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. That great city. Because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Now I repeat. There and there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. That great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Now all through history, ancient Babylon was always opposed 
to Israel. Now, Babylon here represents the system of the children of the world. While Israel represents God's chosen people. Now, we, when we look at Genesis chapter 11, Genesis chapter 11, we will see there in the account of the Tower of Babel. Now, after the flood, when the dwellers of the earth restarted its population, there were some who despised the things of God and refused to dwell with them that honor him. Now, they fell into apostasy. Now, apostasy is the abandonment or the re renunciation of a religious principle. Now, they no longer, or rather they no longer believe in the creator God. So these unbelievers left and went to the plain of Shinar on the bank of the river Euphrates and started building a city. Now the whole objective of building this city was to turn the hearts of men away from God. Now also the mind of the future generation and to lead the people into idolatry, which is the worship of idols. They were erected a tower, so if the Lord sent a flood again, if he sent a flood again, although he promised he wouldn't, if he sent a flood again, they would be saved. No longer did they trust in the God of heaven for protection, but rather they build something to trust that they will be saved. Now this is total idolatry, brethren. While building this tower, the people secure apartments in the tower for their idols. Now we are looking at the Tower of Babel. Idols of gold, idols of silver, but God was displeased with their works and he confounded their languages. Because of that, the building of the tower stopped and the people were scattered. The tower, as I have mentioned before, was called the Tower of Babel. Now, Babel here means confusion. There is where Babylon, the word Babylon, originated. Now we are looking at the fall of ancient Babylon. And I pray that God will help all of us to follow today. Now at the time of the fall of the Babylonian Empire, in the days of Daniel, the empire fell to the Medes and Persians. But there was something very specific that happened to cause Babylon to fall. Let us find out what is that today. Now Daniel chapter 5 verses 3 and 4 it reads. Then they brought the vessels, the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God. Which was at Jerusalem. And the king and his prince, his wives, and his concubines drank in them. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold, of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. Now the gospel of the kingdom was preached in Babylon through Daniel. And Nebuchadnezzar was brought to acknowledge and to worship the true God. But after Nebuchadnezzar's death, his successors failed to profit by his experience. Now the climax was reached when Belshazzar used the sacred vessels from the house of God, which was dedicated to worship, worshiping the God of heaven. 
Rather, he drank the Babylonian wine of idolat idolatry worship. Then something strange happened. Now, the right hand writing came on the wall. Let us read that in Daniel chapter 5 and verse 5. It says, In the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlesticks upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote, then the king continence was changed. The king continence was changed. And his thought troubled him so that his joints of his loins were loosed and his knees smote one to another. The king tried all the worldly wise men and they could not understand the heaven writings. Finally, Daniel was called. Verse 22 said, And thou, his son, O Belshazzar, has not humbled thine heart, thou, though thou knewest all this, but has lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven. We are finding out why the writing came in the very first place. And they have brought the vessels of the house before thee. And thou and thy laws and thy wives and thy concubines have drunk wine in them. So Daniel is telling the king exactly how the writing came there and what he did to cause the writing to come. Now he told them, and thou hast praised the gods of silver, gold, brass, wood, and stone, which see not, nor hear not. And the God in whose hand his breath is, and whose are all thy ways, hast thou not glorified? The, then Daniel told the Babylonian king, and this is the handwriting that was written. Now we have to listen very carefully. This was the handwriting. It says, Mini, Mini, Tikel, you farson. This was the handwriting on the wall. Mini, Mini, Tikel, you farson. This is the interpretation of the thing Daniel said. Mini. It means that God had numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Tikel, thou art weighed in the balances and found wanting. And Pharson, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Now, anything, brethren, that is confusion in a spiritual sense is Babylon. Anything that is confusion in a spiritual sense is Babylon. All idolatry is Babylon. All messages that lead our minds from the Creator God is Babylon. The system of this world once opposed to God is Babylon. And this message is telling us Babylon is fallen, is fallen. Now hear what Jeremiah chapter 51, 7 to 9 has to say. Babylon had been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine thereof. Therefore, the nation is mad. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. Howl for her. Take balm for her pain. If so, be she may be healed. We would have healed Babylon. But she is not healed. Forsake her. And let us go one, everyone, into our own country. For her judgment reaches the heaven. And her lift 
and is lifted rather up even to the sky. Now at this point, we must understand some prophetic terms. Now anytime in prophecy, we see she or woman, it automatically means church. Now Jeremiah chapter 6 verses 2 it says, I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. So a pure woman will represent God's church. Amen. And a harlot will automatically represent the church of Satan. Now anytime we see the word wine in prophecy, when, when we read 1 Corinthians 11, we see that the wine there represents the blood of Christ. But however, this wine is given to make people drunk with the wrath of her fornication. So this here represents false system. This here, brethren, represents a false system of worship. A false system of doctrines. Totally opposition or opposite to God. Now God's blood represents his atonement, what he has done for us. But this wine represents confusion. Total confusion. So within this verse, the wine represents false doctrine. Now let us read Proverbs chapter 31 verses 4 and 5. The Bible says, It is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for prince strong drink. Least they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. Now drinking wine causes us to forget God's law. In other words, partaking of false doctrine causes us to forget God's law. The more we partake in false doctrine, the more we will move from God's law, which is actually his character. We have looked at ancient Babylon so far. And because there is nothing new under the sun, for a short while, let us look at modern Babylon. The Bible says, And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials and talked with me saying unto me come hither i will show thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication so he carried me away, John is saying, in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet color beast, full of the name blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls having a golden cup in her hand full of abomination and filthiness and, forn and her fornication and upon her forehead was written mystery babylon the great the mother of harlots and abomination of the earth and I saw a woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admonition. Now here is the explanation. That was a city which reigned over the kings of the earth in John's time. There was a city 
that reign over the kings of the earth in John's time. And we know by study and prophecy, this city was Rome. And the seven hills, and the seven hill city rather, has, and the seven hill city, and the seven hill city has given its name to the power which succeed to its dominion. The organization which is represented by this woman, Gretchen, within the Bible, it is the Church of Rome. It ruled by the papacy. Now in verse 6, brethren, it says in Revelation, And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. There was a time in history where the church of God was persecuted by the church of Rome. So ancient Babylon, religion had immortal features, or immoral rather, features. But modern Babylon, however, commits spiritual fornication, polluting the church with false doctrine and pagan practices, and having illicit connection with the secular power to enforce her teachings. And like her ancient namesake, Rome Babylon has made many nations drink impure wine from her cup. Now we are living in a world that is filled with false doctrines. Now we have established many of them so far. But there are false doctrines, however, such as when you die, as we have established, you go straight to heaven or hell. There are false doctrines that say we must ask a man for forgiveness. There is false doctrine as such that the Sabbath was changed from Saturday to Sunday. And also false doctrine as we are saved by works. Any, many others. We can quote, but all of these are false doctrine, however, and it was originated from somewhere. But although there are many false doctrine out there or out here, God has preserved his word so you and I can live free without being contaminated by the world. Our only hope, brethren, we need to know God's will, what God is saying, and how we ought to live. The only way this can happen is when we walk in the light. And that light is Jesus Christ. Amen. The only how we will not be deceived by Babylon today, we must be in the ark of Christ. Now, there are many Babylonian influences out in this world. However, it is essential that we identify end time Babylon. Many verses in the Bible warns against Babylon and tells us to come out of her. We must understand that God is calling us out of Babylon because Babylon is fallen. Now when we read the second angel's messages, it is a, a link scripture to that is Revelation chapter 18. Revelation chapter 18 verses 1 to 5. Now we must understand what God is really calling us out of. God is calling us out of Babylon. Revelation chapter 18, verses 1 to 5, it says, And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was likened with his glory.
glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen and is become the inhabitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. And all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the kings of the earth, the kings of the earth has committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacy. And I hear a voice, and I hope that all of us is hearing this voice today. This is what the voice is telling us. Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God has remembered her iniquity. Sometimes I often wonder, is the sin of this world have the sin of the, this world reached heaven? Are we just living in a state just as the people was living in ancient Babylon? God wants us today to come out of hell. Plainly speaking, friends, if we find ourselves in any place, that does not adhere and uphold God's law. It's Babylon. Yes. And God is actually calling us out of it. Yes. 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 God does not want us to remain in Babylon. He cannot save us in Babylon. God wants us to come out. God wants us to come out of the dark and live in the light. Now, in that verse, the unclean and hateful bird tells us of the end time Babylon has a counterfeit power of the Holy Spirit. We know that we are living in the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. And God wants to pour out his spirit on us. But our vessels must be ready to accept or receive God's Holy Spirit. And as God has his Holy Spirit, Satan always have a counterfeit. Now we are reading verse 3. It tells us that this false system of worship had fed its followers with wine with we, which we have already established as false doctrine. Now the word fornication is used there because this system has left worshiping God and turned to idolatry. But in verse 4, brethren, is where hope is found. It says, come out of her, my people. Just as the, the angel went to Lot to take him out of Sodom and Gomorrah right before the fire started falling. God also wants to take us by the hand today and take us out of the system of false worship. He wants to save us and he will go any, any measure in order for us to be saved. And I think, I know that the ultimate measure Jesus have done was on the cross. He has died for us. To ensure that we have an opportunity to regain that which Adam has lost. The, now the opportunity is ours. Do we want to choose to serve God? Just to clarify the message. We can see in Revelation 14, there is also a warning message. That mystery Babylon... We know that it's already started working. And that is confirming also Revelation 17. Now the church is also described as a harlot. 
Now a harlot is someone, now I was listening to her preaching and I find this was so, so profound. And I said, I have to use it. Now, a harlot, we know, is someone who don't have no respect for marriage vows or wedding vows. Now, one preacher puts it like this. The wedding vows is actually God's law. And, but, although the wedding vows is God's law, God's bride is his church. You and I who accept him and will delight in his law. But mystery Babylon, the false church, does not care for God's law. It does not care for God's law. And any church that teaches we can live without God's law or without our marriage vows is actually Babylon. Now, keeping our vows, it shows that we respect God. Amen. You see, keeping God's law, although I have mentioned we are not saved by works, but when we love God, we will understand that God, because we love Him so much, God wants us to obey Him. Amen. God wants us to be faithful to Him. If you love me, keep my commandments. Now, all of God's law, brethren, it is not burdensome. It is just showing us, okay, because we love God, we will choose to obey Him. God wants us to keep our marriage vows to Him. God wants us to keep His saying, His words, because His laws is actually to protect us. Now, let us go back a little. During the early Christian church centuries, Jewish and Christian literature refer to the city of Rome as Babylon. Now when we read 1 Peter 5.13 it says, we recognize that within that verse it refers to Rome as Babylon. It says the church that is at Babylon elected together with you salutes you. And so that Marcus, your son, that is what the verse says. So the Roman church is literally, brethren, end time Babylon. Now even the Catholics acknowledge this as I quote, Babylon from which Peter addressed his first epistle is understood by learned annotators. Protestants and Catholic to refer as for the, 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 the place Rome. Now the word Babylon being symbolic of the corruption then prevailed in the city of Caesar. So even in the New Testament we see that in the book Peter it refers to Rome as Babylon. Now let us go back to the great call connected to the second angel's message. Come out of her, my people. Which means that some of God's people is still in Babylon. You may be listening today. And you may be even in a place of worship that does not adhere to God's law. God is telling us, come out. And this is actually a message not of condemnation. But this is a message of love. Amen. God wants to save us. If we are being taught Babylonian characteristics, God is calling us out. If we are being taught that the Old Testament is done away with, God is calling us out. Brethren, if we are being taught that the law is done away with, that is Babylonian characteristics. If we are being taught that many people are in heaven or hell. If we are being taught that Mary is the mediator. If we are being taught that Sunday is a new Sabbath. If we are being taught that I can pray to my dead relatives. God is calling us out. If we are being taught that 
idol worship is acceptable? God is calling us out. And if we are being taught that baptism is acceptable through sprinkling, God is calling us out, brethren. God is calling us out of all these systems of worship. Why is God calling you and I out? Because this system of worship is fallen. It has failed and if it refuses to come out, if you and I refuse to come out, sad will be our portion. Come out of her, my people, and be not partakers of her sins. God wants us to be saved. He will go any length to ensure that. Brethren, God is calling us out. Now, how can we secure our salvation? How can we rather know the truth, the way, and the life? Now, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, it reads, Study to show thyself approved unto God. It is impossible, brethren, to not to be deceived while neglecting our scripture to read. It is impossible not to be deceived if we neglect prayer. But study. Study to show us yourself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly divide the word of truth. Friends, this is not legalism. This is not condemnation. I, we are not here to condemn you. But it's all about acknowledging the truth and understanding the love of God, understanding he wants to save us, and understanding that there is a brighter way to life. And that way is Jesus Christ. Amen. It is Babylon's system of religious structures aligned against God that is condemned, not you. But it's a Babylonian system is condemned, not the individual. So God is calling you, my dear friends, just as the prodigal son went back to his father, you can come back to your heavenly father today. After he has wasted his living with riotous living, he puts pride away and went back to his father. It doesn't matter who we are, what we have done. We must reach a point we don't really care what people say, but we have to come back to God. Amen. Now procrastination is very detrimental. If we wait till another day to accept Christ, we may just not have that opportunity to do so. But today, we hear God's word. He is telling us, harden not our hearts. Now Mark chapter 7, verses 7 and 9, it reads, How be it, in vain do they worship me, teachings but doctrines, the commandment of men. It goes on to say, for laying aside the commandments of God, ye hold the traditions of men, as the washing of pots and cups, and many other such like things ye do. But verse 9 it says, and he said unto them, full well ye reject the commandments of God, that ye may keep your own traditions. Traditions. There is two, uh, two cups today. The cup of the Lord and the cup of Babylon. The Lord's cup contains truth. And the living truth as, as in Jesus Christ. But the cup of Babylon, however, contains false doctrine and human traditions. Now think about it. Who do you rather serve? or follow the God who have created us or men are we willing to now follow the laws of God or do we 
you still want to continue in the traditions of men. God have a better way. If by chance, brethren, we remain in the false system of worship, the same writing on the wall can be pronounced against us. Now, mini, mini, tickle, you person. You have numbered. Your days, rather, had been numbered. You have been weighed in the balance and found wanting. And there is a possibility, if we procrastinate, that salvation could be given to another. The message of John the Baptist is now presented to you, and that message is repent. Yes. Repent, brethren, and be baptized. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. God wants us to abandon our sins. God wants us to abandon our old habits. Things that we are holding on so dearly. Does that word us being lost? But rather, there is a better way. And that way is in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Don't let that message of condemnation be pronounced against us. We see how our country is going. Total lockdown. This is the call for salvation, brethren. Let us open up our hearts and receive God's word. Now my husband, as he has rightly said to the starting, we will have a little break with some song and then we will get into the third angel's message because what we can do today, we will do today because tomorrow promise no one. May God bless you. Continue to listen and stay close as we discover the last angel message for the world in these last days. What have I to ask beside? Can I doubt His tender mercy? Who true life has been my guide? Heavenly peace, divine is comfort. Here by faith in Him to dwell For I know whatever befalls me Jesus doeth all things well For I know whatever befalls me Jesus doeth all things well All the way my Savior leads me, chairs each wine, then part I tread, gives me grace for every trial, feeds me with the living bread. Do my weary steps may fall down. And my soul hurts may be gushing from the rock before me. Low a spring of joy I see gushing from the rock before me. Low a spring of joy I see all the way. My Savior leads me 
would have furnished half his love. Perfect rest to me is promised in my father's house above. When I wait to life immortal, wings my fly through realms of days. This my son through endless ages. Jesus led me all the way. This my song through endless ages. Jesus led me all the way. There's a land that is fairer than this. And by faith we can see it afar For our Father we over the way To prepare us a dwelling place there In the sweet by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. Sing them over again to me, wonderful words of life. Let me more of their beauty see, wonderful words of life. Words of life and beauty Teach me faith and duty Beautiful words, wonderful words Wonderful words of life Beautiful words, wonderful words Wonderful words of life Sweetly echo the gospel call Wonderful words of life Sinner is to the loving call Wonderful words of life all so freely given uh, Wooing us to heaven uh, Beautiful words Wonderful words Wonderful words of life Beautiful words Wonderful words Wonderful words of life Wonderful words of life Wonderful words of life Praise the Lord let us pray. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you. We thank you, O Lord, because we recognize that you love us. And you have given us another chance to accept you. So, Father, Lord Jesus, I pray, as your word go forth yet again, that you may really open the heart of someone. That day, Lord Jesus, will accept you and recognize that the life that they are living now does not please you and they need to change. Father, I thank you, Lord, for even giving that person the opportunity. Continue, Lord Jesus, to touch us with your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, we are looking at the third angel's message today. Well, now. Now this message is very, very important. 
as well as the two has gone before it. Now one thing I want us to all keep in our mind is that Jesus really loved all of us. Amen. It's not that Jesus loved us more than he loved you because we are out here speaking to you. No. He loved all of us. Christ shed his blood for all of us. It doesn't matter our religious affiliation or our financial status or our nationality or our race. But Jesus loved all of us the same. Now, but it's also important because now Jesus loved all of us, he wants us to know the truth. Now, this message of the third angel are somewhat the hardest to understand and somewhat the hardest to accept. But I guarantee you, if you go back and study it prayerfully, that God will bring enlightenment. And even right now, I believe that the Holy Spirit is very powerful and that he really wants to open up our minds to understand spiritual truths. Now let us read Revelation chapter 14 verses 9 to 12. And the word of the Lord says, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive it his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Now here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God, and the faith of Jesus. Now, it is only after the year 1844 was this message understood. After an event called the Great Disappointment. Now, the Great Disappointment took place on October the 22nd, 1844. Now, this was a movement called the Millerite led by one by the name of William Miller. Now he studied the prophecy of Daniel and produced the conclusion that Jesus Christ will come again to the earth, cleanse and purify and take possession of his saints in 1843. But when that day passed, they came up with another day being October the 22nd, 1844. Now both days passed and Christ did not return. And all the people was disappointed. But later, God revealed that his people, that the date was rightly studied, but the event was wrong. He was not, Christ was not returning to the earth in 1844, but rather, Christ in the heavenly sanctuary was moving from the holy place into the most holy place to finish or to do his work. Amen. Now the third angel message is the final warning to the world. This message must be preached today. And it's so ironic that God have it today to be preached. God knows all. You see, we can only see thus far. But God sees that when we started Sunday, that Thursday would have been our last. And he would have had, he knew that he had created an opportunity to, for someone 
to be saved and to accept him. And you see this message, brethren, we know that this message, when understood, will change our life forever. Now, we have read, if any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead, or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, we must understand this today. One, who is the beast? Two, what really is the image of the beast? And lastly, what is the mark? What is the mark of the beast? You see, many people have their own interpretation on these three. But the Bible gives us the truth. Amen. The Bible tells us exactly who is the beast. The Bible tells us what is the image of the beast and what is it, the mark yes. of the beast. Yes. Now let us look firstly at who is the beast. Good question. Good now to understand this, let us read Revelation chapter 13 verses 1 to 8 and then 16 to 18. And I stood upon the sand of the sea. And I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horn ten crowns, and upon his head was the name Blasphemy. And the beast, and the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were the feet of a bear. And his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him power. Or gave him his power. And his seat. And great authority. And I saw one of his head. As it were wounded to death. And his deadly wounds was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped. The dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things of blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and him that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Verse 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose name are not written in the book or the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world and verse 16 to 18 it reads and he calls it all both small and great rich and poor free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads and that no man shall buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name here is wisdom God is telling us here is wisdom let him that had understanding count the number of the beast for it is the number of a man. And his number is six hundred, three score, and six. We know his number is six, six, six. Remember the verse said it is a number of a man. Now when you study or we study Daniel 7, we will learn about the Antichrist, which is another name for beast. Now in Daniel 7, it is established that the Antichrist is the papacy. 
Now, by chance, if you don't know what is papacy, it is the office or authority of Rome, of the Pope, rather. Now, Revelation chapter 13, verses 1, it says, it says that the beast rise from the sea. Now, the sea or water in prophecy, it represents or it refers to people or a populated area. Revelation chapter 17 verse 15 And he said unto me The waters which thou sawest Are the whore Or where, where the whore sitteth Are people and multitude And nation and town So people of Kabylan So the beast The papacy The office of the Pope The beast Or the papacy The office of the Pope arose literally in Western Europe. Well said, well said. Now in Revelation chapter 13 verse 2, it says, And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, we have established in the first angel's message that the dragon is Satan. And his seat, so he gave the beast power and his seat and great authority. Now if we study Daniel chapter 7 and compare it with Revelation chapter 13 verse 2, we understand that it is very identical. We see that in Daniel 7, Babylon was described as a lion-like beast. Where in Revelation 13, it has, they said the beast have a mouth of a lion. And it goes on, media Persia, the bear-like beast. And in Revelation, it says that the beast have feet like a bear. And it goes on to describe the beast. But the four beasts of Daniel 7 are depicted as part of the beast. Because the papacy brethren incorporated pagan beliefs and practices from all four empires. Now also, this beast, this empire, received its authority from the dragon which we know is Satan. Now in Revelation chapter 13 verse 3, one of the beast's head received a deadly wound when Napoleon General Alexander Bautier, if we go through history, entered Rome and took Pope Pius captive in February 1798. Now, Napoleon decreed that at the death of the Pope, the papacy would be discontinued. Now, the Pope died in France in August 1799. His wound was healed because worldly people are saying that papal structure is already prepared for worldwide control. Now, this beast brethren would become a strong political power and religious organization. Now, Revelation brethren, and it's very, very important to understand Revelation as well as Daniel. Revelation chapter 13 verses 5 and 6 it reads. It made it clear rather that this beast would be guilty of blasphemy. Yes, sir. Now, do we know what is blasphemy? Now, can you remember when Jesus told the paralyzed man in Matthew chapter 9 that thy sins be forgiven thee? Now, these Pharisees accused Jesus of blasphemy. They say no one has the power to forgive sin but God. They were blind of the fact that Jesus was God in the flesh. 
First Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness that God was manifested in the flesh. They were blinded to that fact. So, the end time beast will be blaspheming and will claim to have power to forgive sin. Now, this beast in the Bible, it would reign for 42 prophetic months. Now in prophecy, a day is equal to a year. And we can find that in Numbers chapter 14 verse 34. So, if it is 42 months in prophetic years, then that will give us 1,260 years. And we know through history that the papacy reigned for that amount of years from AD 538 to 1798. Now, it would make war, Revelation said, that this beast power will make war and persecute the saints. Now, the papacy did persecute and destroy millions of saints during the Dark Ages. History can't testify of that. Now, Revelation chapter 13 verse 18, it says the beast will have a number, for it is the number of a man. You see, when I was growing up, um, there was a talk that this lotto of play because it has number 1 to 36, when you add up all that numbers, it gives you 666. Whereas that is true, because I have checked it myself. But here in the Bible, it is saying that the beast will have a number, but it is a number of a man. So through the news right now, we can see that certain people are putting 666 on their foreheads and you know, they are claiming mark of the beast. But the Bible is very, very, very certain when it says the beast will have a number which is 666. It is the number of a man. Now brethren, when we look at the Pope of Rome, the title of the Pope of Rome is actually Vicarious Faith Day, which actually means Vicar of the Son of God. And if we do that calculation, because we are dealing with Rome, and we calculate the, or the name of the Pope or the title of the Pope, Vicarious Philip Day, and we check it in Roman numerals, we will come up with the number 666. So this beast represents none other than Roman Catholicism, brethren. Don't be fooled. This beast in the Bible in Revelation represents none other than Roman Catholicism. Now understand that I never said that Roman Catholic people, it represents Roman Catholic people because God comes to save everybody. Amen. But, however, this beast represents the system of Roman Catholicism. Brethren, remember we want tr the truth. And we know that the Bible said the truth will make us free. Amen. Now, we are he not here to lie to you. We are not here to cover up anything. The Bible said it and history also declare that the, what the Bible has written hundreds of years ago is the truth. Amen. Now, however, this beast represents the system of Catholicism. So one, who is the beast? The beast is Roman Catholicism. So next, the question we must deal with is what now is the image of the beast? What is the image of the beast? Now when we read Revelation chapter 13 verses 11, we will learn that another beast coming up out of the earth, having two horns and a lamb,
having two horns as a lamb, but speaking as a dragon. Now in 1798, the first beast, the papacy, was taken into captivity. This is the time in which John saw the other beasts arising. It arises not out of the sea, which we know that it is a, a place where it has multitudes of people, but rather out of the earth. In an area that was previously not inhabited by great nations. Now multitudes and tongue, it was not inhabited. Now the only nation that qualifies to the most, as a most popular or the second beast, the only nation that qualifies as the second beast, if you ask anyone, what is the most popular nation in the world today? We will hear the answer, the United States of America. Now, so while one beast, the papacy, was going down, another beast was actually raising up or rising up. Now, the rise of the United States, first we had in 1777, the Declaration of Independence. 1777 to 1779, France recognizes U.S. independence. When we look at 1789, U.S. Constitution was placed in effect. Yes. In 1789, French Revolution began. Then 1791, the Bill of Rights added. And then in 1798, Napoleon's army captured Pope. Now the first beast as we have recognized is Roman Catholicism. And the second beast is the United States of America. But sadly brethren, the United States of America will exercise the same authority as Roman Catholicism and cause the world to worship papal system. Now the mark of the beast will be enforced by the image of the beast. Now an image is something that has the attributes of the original. Roman Catholicism was a power that utilized state resources in order to enforce its doctrines. Even when these doctrines was actually contrary to the word of God. That is exactly what the United States of America will do. If we listen carefully in the news, who is everyone turning to? Now, the Venezuelan president, Nicholas, whatever his surname is, said, he has written to the Pope asking him to help mandate his country crisis after the sweep, nations recognize the revive or the revival opposition chief and interim leaders. So actually what it is saying is that Venezuelan president is actually turning to the Pope for help. Now Ukraine president asks Pope to help win release of prisoners of war. Now, the present Pope Francis may be, as it is said in the news, Joe Biden's most important ally. Can you see a unity happening, brethren? Let us ask God to open up our eyes. It is not about condemning anyone. It is about prophecy and the truth. Brethren, all of us want to hear the truth. In becoming like Rome, by forming a union between church and state, and using the power of the state to enforce religious laws, the United States will become the image of the beast. Now, brethren, in verse 12 you know, in Revelation, it says, and he exercises all the power of the first beast. 
So United States will exercise all the power of the first beast, which was Roman Catholicism. And cause it the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly womb was healed. And he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do. In the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast, which had the womb, or which had the womb by a sword, and did live. Now here is where we will address our third question. What is the mark of the beast? What is the mark of the beast? Now we know that Satan tries to counterfeit God in everything. So if to understand this, we must understand firstly, what is the mark of God? Now when we understand what is the mark of God, we will clearly understand what is the mark of the beast. Now, the word mark in prophecy, it can use interchangeably. Sometimes it uses mark, sometimes it uses sign. It all means the same thing. Now, Ezekiel chapter 20 verse 12, it says, Moreover also I give them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctified Amen. them. In the original, the word for sign is oath, which means a, distinct, a distinctive mark or a distinguishing mark. So God's sign or his mark is his Sabbath. Now, in the Bible, the word, as I said, seal, sign, mark, and token are used interchangeably. Now, God's sign, the Sabbath, represents his holy power to rule his creator or to rule as creator and savior. True Sabbath keeping signifies that a person has surrendered his life to Jesus Christ and is willing to follow wherever Jesus leads. Now since the symbol mark of God's authority and power is his holy Sabbath day, then Satan mark will also include a day. Yes, sir. Because he cannot come up with anything original. Now, we are reading. Cardinal Gibson claims that Sunday keeping is a mark of Roman Catholic authority. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Of course, the Catholic Church claims that the change was her act. So it's nothing we are making up on anybody. It could not have been otherwise as none in those days could have dreamed of doing anything in matters of spiritual matters, ecclesiastical and religious without her. This act is a mark of her ecclesiastical power and authority and religious matter. Now this, you can find this on the internet. It is an extract from a letter written by Cardinal Gibson, November 11, 1898. So Sunday worship, brethren, has no scriptural authority and rests solely on tradition. Now, Protestants have always claimed that the Bible alone should be the standard for religious beliefs. Amen. 
Now to meet this challenge, the Roman Catholic Church called the Council of Trent in 1545 and proclaimed that tradition should stand above scripture. All right, the word. Now this is absolutely wrong. Does tradition stand above the Bible? No. The answer is absolutely no. Now I'm quoting from one by the name of Walter Veet. Now he said the Sabbath commandment is not only the heart of the Ten Commandments, but it is also the seal of the commandment. Remove it and the commandment have no authority. Every law must state the name of the lawgiver, his title, and his jurisdiction. Now the fourth commandment was we could find the name of the Lord giver. It says, Lord, his jurisdiction, the heaven and the earth, the sea and all that in them is, and his position, creator, the Lord God. He made, he's a creator God. Now this commandment defines whose authority is being acknowledged when these specific Ten Commandments are obey the you see man tradition could never stand above the bible now in these last days brethren it will boil down to worship are we observing the lord's sabbath day which we know is the seventh day we have already established which is the saturday or are we acknowledging man's Paul's Sabbath, which is the first day of the week, Sunday. Can you remember in the book of Daniel when King Nebuchadnezzar set up a golden image and he command everyone to bow down to it? King Nebuchadnezzar at that time represents the end time beast, United States of America. We know, brethren, that the image of the beast will be an introduction of a national Sunday law. Now we, we have that book here. I'm not sure how much copies we have, but feel free if you are interested learning about the national Sunday law, you can have a copy. We will, now this law will be enforced. We will be forced now to rest on Sunday the fall Sabbath as if we, and if we don't just as Meshach, Shadrach and Abednego when they refuse to bow down to the image they were cast into the fiery furnace likewise us if we be obedient to God and we refuse to observe the fall Sabbath which is the first day of the week persecution will start now it has already begun brethren the Pope in collaborating or collaboration with the United States is setting up things up for the National Sunday Law now could we remember recently in Barbados recently in Barbados they now have a Sunday rest all businesses must be closed. A gentleman by the name of Terence Honoré, I was saying that sometime, yeah. he wrote an article, let's keep Sunday sacred. There is no sacredness in Sunday. God pronounced the special blessing upon his holy Sabbath. Amen. There is no sacredness in Sunday. President Jesus is about to return. Decisions must be made. Are we going to observe God? Or are we going to continue to follow man? I am not going to read the punishment for all those who receive the mark of the beast. You know why? Because any decision we make, we must make it out of love and not out of fear. But what I can say, 
I encourage you to go and read Revelation 14. And you will see for yourself, if you refuse, what will take place. So brethren of Cape Land, don't be fooled. The mark of the beast is not no inserted microchip. It is not a visible tattoo with the number 666. Because the Bible rightly states it is a number of a man. And we have established that this man is none other than the Pope of Rome. Now, the new world order is leading all these things with the chip and the vaccine and all these other things is leading to the new world order. But it is not the mark of the beast. Now this new world order, all nations will have to compromise. It is either we are standing on God's side or we are standing on Satan's side. Now could you remember that our Prime Minister Keith Rowley, he said on Good Friday, on his Good Friday speech last year that after COVID we will see a new world order. Now the article is still there on, on, the, um, on the internet. Our dear Prime Minister, he said, after COVID, we will experience a new world order. So COVID and mask wearing and money change and vaccine, all is a part of the new world order. But it is not the mark of the beast. Well said. Well said. The mark of the beast is Sunday sacredness. And you won't be able to buy and sell unless we bow our knees to the authorities of this world, which is actually bowing to Satan. Brethren, the decision is yours. There remaineth a rest for the people of God. And that rest is none other than God's holy Sabbath day. He is calling us back to reflect on him as the creator God. Now if we created something, we will want whatsoever or invent. We will want that thing to reflect us. Likewise, God in his love, he has created us. And he has simply asked us to remember my holy sabbath today the final test is coming revelation chapter 14 verse 12 sums up this whole message it says here is the patience of the saints here are they that keep the commandments of god don't listen and they say the commandments is done away with here are they that keep the commandments of god and the faith of Jesus Christ. There will only be two classes of people. There is they that keep the commandments of God. And then the other class, they that keep the commandments of man. Only two classes. Daniel chapter 7 verse 25. And he shall speak great words. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High. And think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand. Until a time and a time and the dividing of time. So, the last test in this world. The last test will be around the commandment that is both a law and time. And the only commandment that is both law and time in the Ten Commandments is the Sabbath day. Brethren, just like in the Garden of Eden, there were only 
two trees. There were two trees rather, not only, but the two trees. The tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So in the last days, brethren, the test is around two days. God has given us his Sabbath, the seventh day, the first day of the seventh day of the week. And there is the counterfeit Sabbath, the first day of the week. Two days, two classes, just like Cain and Abel. It's either we are obedient to God and do what God says, or we be like Cain, very disobedient and do our own thing. But one thing we must make up our mind because we know what happened to Abel for being obedient. Persecution came. Right when the first beast, Rome, the second beast, United States of America, he will exercise all the powers of Rome and cause the earth and them and them to dwell, that dwell on the earth to worship the first beast whose deadly womb was healed. The word cause in that verse, brethren, force. it means forced. So Satan, with his wild scheme and craft, will force us to observe the false Sabbath, which is Sunday worship. But God will always have a people who love him and is desirous to keep his commandments. Amen. I hope that that be us today. Amen. I encourage you, KP Lan, take into consideration all that you have learned this week and ask the Lord to help you to understand and help him and ask the Lord that you, he will help you to be led by his spirit. And I'm guarantee you that is a prayer that God will always answer because God wants to save us. Amen. Please don't be deceived. Take heed, lest you be deceived. God is coming back very, very soon. And he is coming back for a people who is ready. Who can stand amidst the persecution? Who can stand amidst COVID? We think COVID is bad. Brethren, this is just a smoke. But God's grace is sufficient for all of us today. Continue to study. Continue to pray. And continue to watch for Jesus is coming back soon, brethren. God bless you all. There'll be light in the sky from the palace on high when I come to the end of the road. Every long weary mile I'll recount with a smile when I come to the end of the road. When the long day is ended, the journey is on. I shall enter that blessed abode for the Savior I love will be waiting for me when I come. Eat open wide and a friend by my side when I come to the end of the road. That is all that I ask as a crown for my task when I come to the end of the road. When the long day the journey is on. 
I shall enter that blessed abode for the Savior I love will be waiting for me when I come the end of the road just a gate open wide and a friend by my side when I come to the end of the road and the fools that be said God will make me forget when I come to the end of the road and the long day Just over the mountains in the promised land Lies the holy city built by God's own hand As of we every footsteps in the mountain press We can view our homeland of eternity Glory streaming through the gates of John. There we soon will enter, never more to roam. Hear the angels singing, we are near. 